Okay, so making this dress is actually simple. It has a lot of techniques. It has this yoke on the upper part of the the half scale, and then the lower part has some drapes on it, and then it has this deep sweetest neckline. So we are going to be taking this one at a time. I have my basic bodies drafted already. This is my chest line, the bust points, my waist that, my arm hole, and my neckline is three inches by three inches. So the first thing I'm going to do now is to decide the height that I want for the neckline. Okay, that's the uppermost part. So it depends on what you want basically, but for me, I want it to be around five inches. So from this starting point, I'm going to mark five inches. So I'm going to just mark the five inches height like this. And then you're going to determine the depth of your neckline, okay? So before I go further, this is an overlap dress. So it has overlap on the lower part alone. So for my overlap, I have already folded in the inches that I want. So you need to determine the amount of overlap that you want. So I'm using about five and a half to six inches for my overlap. So I measured this before I start my basic body. So I'm just going to fold this because the overlap does not involve the yoke. So after taking out my yoke, now I can work on the overlap part of my dress. Okay. So now. For the depth of my neckline, I want it to be around seven and a half to eight inches. Okay, so this is eight inches here. I can also maintain your chest line measurement. So after noting your the depth of your neckline like this, the highest point of the neckline, which is why we have this five inches. To know that point, I'm just going to extend my that line upwards like this, as you have seen. And then from here now i'm going to connect to that point using the curved side of my ruler so i'm going to try to find a really nice curve like this okay so this is the first part of the neckline and then for the second part you need to note where you want it to stop on your arm hole area so for me i'm just going to measure around six inches like this and then on that point I'm going to take my curved ruler again and then find another nice curve to just blend everything in. Okay, so once you have it, you're going to connect as seen. So this is what my deep sweetheart neckline is going to look like. So now the neckline is taken care of. Now I can cut off my yoke. So that i can work on the lower part of the neckline so now if i extend if i bring out my my overlap side i'm going to extend the waistline like this so that i can enter into the overlap side as well and then this v this like this neckline that i have i'm going to continue it up to my to my overlap allowance as well so whatever it is that you are doing make sure that they all blend well i'm using this curve ruler again and then i'm making sure that i have something really really smooth so once you have it i'm going to connect everything like this and this is what it looks like now so now i can cut this out so i'll take my scissors so i'm folding it like this and then I'm going to cut out the yoke first. Okay. So this is going to be the yoke as we have seen. You cut your neckline and the shoulder slope as well. And now I'm going to cut out the lower bodies as well. So if you're adding lining to this, you need to cut your lower bodies like this before you do the overlap and before you do your slash and spread for the drips. Okay? So you have to cut it like this on fold for your lining. So I'm just going to trace this out on another paper and then keep. Then after that, I'm going to open it up like this and then I'll cut out the... Um, 
overlap so that I can have something like this and this is going to be the pattern so now for the lining you just need to fold in your overlap and then you cut out this shape you have here for your lining okay and then you cut this part on fold okay so I have cut it out you can see I have cut it out separately by just holding in my allowance and then I'm going to just keep it aside so this is what I'm going to use to cut out my lining so now to introduce my um, drapes I'll first close up my waist that I'm going to close it using my masking tape and then I'm going to introduce some slash lines to this so that I can introduce volumes for the drapes so here I'm just closing the the dots okay so now that the dot is closed i'm going to take my pen and then draw as many slash lines as you need in the direction that you want it to follow remember this is now the new center front okay this was our center front earlier now for the extension this is where the center front lies so now i'm going to be drawing the slash line towards this line because that is how i want the drapes to go okay from from here now I'm drawing the first one, the second one. So just draw as many as you want. But for this tutorial, I think I'm just going to be having like five lines or so. Okay. And I'll make sure that my lines does not go into my same other one. So this is the same other one already drafted with my pattern. So let me just draw it out so that we can see it. So here's my seam allowance. So I'm just going to leave my drapes as it is now. Then after cutting, after drawing the slash lines, you're going to bring your scissors and then cut from the lower part all the way to the tip of the upper part. I'm going to cut to the tip so that I can open it up, but I'm not going to cut completely. So I'm cutting like this. And then I'm going to open it up as much as I want. So to open it, you need a fresh pattern paper and then you're going to place this underneath this pattern that you already have. Okay, so I have my pattern paper underneath now. So I'm going to be opening it up by, I think, two and a half inches or two inches, depending on what you want basically. So to open it, you're going to... I'm going to use my tape to hold it down okay so i'm holding the first one like this and then i'm going to measure whatever opening that i want from the first one to the second one so if you're going to open by two inches once you have your two inches you place your your pattern like this so if you want to have you place it on the two and a half inches so once you place it like that you hold it again with your masking tape and then you move to the next one as well and then you open it by whatever inches that you want so you can see how i am opening this hub so this is how i'm going to open up all of them to introduce the volume that i need okay so i have opened it up as you have seen so the next thing now is to connect everything together so while connecting it you are going to have some sort of shortage so at this opening you can just come out like this so that by the time you close it up you are not going to have any shortage or you can just close it up first before you cut it out so to close it up you can see where each line stops all you just need to do now is to split you sort of split it to meet it up with the next line so this is just like closing it to have your original pattern so you can see now me closing the first one now they meet at where they they were before so now the second one i'm just going to carefully move it to the next one as well so this is how i am closing everything up okay so now after closing this you move to the next one again and then you please to meet the next line Okay. So you can see 
what we have here so you can see now that these lines now are equal so this is how i'm going to close it and after closing it now i can use my marker to trace out my waistline again and then i can cut it out easily okay so i have closed it up now i can cut out the waistline Okay, so cutting out the waistline, this is what it looks like now. We can open it back so you can see the extension I was talking about. So assuming we did not close it, we may have some sort of shortage. So now on the side and on the upper part, I'm just going to cut out exactly the shape that we have there. Okay, so after cutting it out, this is what it looks like. So you are going to open it out again because this is how you are going to cut it on your fabric. After cutting it on the fabric, that's when you are going to go ahead and then pleat it to form the drapes. So this is the pattern for the lower part. We are going to cut two of these so that we can have our overlap. And then this is the yoke. So I'm going to cut this using a net fabric and then when i'm cutting i'll make sure that the center front area is on fold and this is what i'm going to use to cut my lining as well and make sure that this part is also cut on fold so i'll go ahead and cut all of them now and bring it back for us to continue okay so i'm going ahead to cut it out you can see this is the lower part so if you want to line the lower part separately you can also cut a lining for it but i'm just going to be Folding it on the edge, okay. But if you want something really neat, you are going to line. You are going to cut it out separately. So if you want to cut lining for this separately. All you just need to do is to close up the the opening that you have created like this. Then after closing up your opening, you are going to cut the line. You can still cut the lining for it if I have enough fabric. But this other lining that I cut out, I cut it for the sole purpose of covering the rough edges that i'm going to have by the time i sew my yoke to it so if you don't mind you can also use your your weaving machine to clean it up but i don't i want it to be really neat that was why i decided to cut a lining for it so now what i'm going to do now is to close the the openings that i have here so to make this easy for me i'm just going to go to the tip now and then notch it at every point that I need to close so any area where I see the notches I will know that I just need to form a pleat there for them to join each other so you can see how I am notching it okay so I'm notching it at that point where I will need to close it up okay you can see that I have allowances all around so now after removing my my pattern i can clearly see my notches so what i'm going to do now is to start pleating it so you from one notch to another you pleat like this and then i'm going to hold with a pin so after pleating this i'll go ahead and look for another <coughs> notch and then i'm going to take it to the next one and pleat again and then i'll hold with another pin i'll move to the next notch again and then i'll pleat it so this is how you're going to pleat it so that you can form your original size and then closing up this is just going to give you the drips that you want so you can see now that we have uh drips like this so now this is the last one i'm going to close it up as well and then hold with my pin so this is what you're going to do to the other side so for these rough edges so as you have it like this you can use this to cut out a lining so that you can use your lining to turn your rough edges remember we are going to lay it on each other so for the other side as well i'm going to look for my notches and then i'm going to lay them over okay so this is the first one you look for your next notch now and then you place it for the second one and then you hold with your pin 
watching so you look for the next one again and then you place it like this and hold and this is the last notch okay so this is the other one as well the next thing is just to place them on each other so they can overlap so to know where your actual center front is you can place your original pattern and then here i can see where the center fold is so i'm just going to overlap them on that point like this and this is what it's going to look like okay so now after joining them together like this you can now use your yoke to turn it out but before then like i said i'm going to cut out lining so that i can have this part that is going to show i want it to be neatly finished so if you don't want to cut lining for yours you can just fold it in because i had it a little allowance there so i think for this tutorial i'm just going to fold it in like this and then i can now sew my 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 yoke to it okay so i have gone ahead to sew down the plate so that i can hold it down for me and also as against folding in the the allowance i don't want to have the same line there so i just got like a miniature fabric a, like a facing so i sew the facing to hit as you can see on this line and i just sew it on the part that is going to show remember this is just a tutorial so please when you are doing yours you should do a neater job make sure that you you can cover it up i can see where i stopped it i stopped it at that, at that point where i'm going to be sewing my yoke to it so assuming you don't have a yoke to this dress you need to cover it up completely before you make your overlap so now i'm going to overlap them on each other and then after overlapping it like this i'm going to hold with my pin okay so when you are placing your overlap my total waistline is supposed to be 18 inches including seam allowance so you need to be checking it once you don't have 18 inches you resize it so you have your 18 inches and once you have 18 inches you're going to pin it down now i'm pinning it down as well as opening up this space on the upper part okay so i have pinned it down on the lower part and then i pinned it on the upper part so for you to note your upper part remember we have our center line which is the starting point which is our initial center front so i just close this now so that i can use that to mark this point so i can still see the mark here which is what i marked here let me use my marker okay so that was where i placed them together on the upper part here and then for this side i also noted where my hammer line stops so on this pattern again i can clearly see where the yoke stops on the handhold area which is here so what i just did was to place my pattern on it so that i can mark that point and then i marked it with my marker as well so you can just fold it over now so that i can replicate it on the other side so you don't mark with your marker i just want us to see what i'm doing very well that's why i'm using a marker so now what i'm going to do is to bring in my yoke and then place it like this okay so you place it like this you arrange it very well and then you iron it please make sure you iron so now i'm just going to flip it over like this and take it to the sewing machine and then i'm going to sew the yoke to the main bodies and then i'll bring it back so that i can cover up everything with our lining okay so i have sewn my yoke as you can see and this is what it looks like on the rough part on the wrong side so you can see so now i'm going to bring in the lining that i cut separately and then i'm just going to use that to cover it up so this is just going to help in resizing this to its original size as well so you can see that my waistline is exactly the same so you can also use your lining to resize the waistline so what i'm going to do now is just flip this over now and then i'm going to sew 
the lining like this so that I can use it to cover up the rough edges okay so I have sewn it now I can see that the lining just conceal all the rough edges that I have neatly so I'm just going to go ahead and notch it and this is what it looks like so you need to iron this so that your drapes can really form okay you iron it down you can even pack it inwards in a way that is not going to show so that you can maintain the drapes that you have already formed and then you cut out the back panel of your choice so i'll just cut a back panel for this a regular back body so that i can sew it on the shoulder and the side and then i'll be able to show you what it looks like on the mannequin okay so this is it on the mannequin the logic to this is you must iron every step of the way okay i couldn't really iron this because it's a tutorial but please iron every step of the way and you can see the drapes that we have formed okay so i try to iron the drapes so that it can be well formed like this so like i said you can decide to tack it neatly inwards so that your drape will be easily formed and you're not going to leave to lose them when it is washed or any time so this is the yoke and this is what the full view of the blouse looks like you just need to join the lower parts to heat and your dress is ready so this dress has a detachable puff sleeve so i have a tutorial on that on the channel as well you can check out the tutorial if you want to learn how to make a detachable puff sleeve i hope you enjoyed watching this tutorial if you enjoyed it let us know in the comment section like comment and subscribe to our channel and i'll see you in the next one bye